This video is going to strictly focus on the mid-level specialized Sequoia that sits in between the three bikes in their adventure bike lineup. The Sequoia splits the difference between the Diverge and the Able. Now I do want to say that I'm not paid by Specialized to talk about this bike at all. I'm purely doing it because I think it looks sweet. When it comes down to it, if there's something I don't like about it, I will let you know. This is also not a full-on review. I don't own this bike. You can consider this video a first look. So starting out, Specialized uses their own in-house premium chromoly steel. The head tube is tapered. It uses a threaded bottom bracket and the dropouts are through axle. All throughout this bike, there's numerous spots for different bottle cage attachments, along with different rack and fender mount. One of the things I really like about this frame construction is the low standover and the fact that the top tube meets the head tube at such a close spot. So you can really get the bars quite low on this bike. The fork is constructed of specialized fact carbon. It's quite beefy in construction, and it also has numerous attachment points for different bottle cage along with plenty of places for attaching different racks, and of course, hardware for fenders. Out of all the features on this bike, the fork is probably my favorite. It's sort of upsetting that the lowest end Sequoia doesn't come with this fork, because I would actually be more interested in owning that model to upgrade it to what I would want, versus buying something like this just to get that fork. Cause... This model of the Sequoia is equipped with Shimano's hydraulic 11-speed 105 group set. It uses non-105 levers, which are probably the ugliest things that have ever been created. Like, what were you thinking, Shimano? It's, it's, it looks terrible. Why didn't you make it look better? I mean, you need to make something that works amazing and looks good. I just don't understand why you wouldn't put more effort into making it look better. Not to mention there's a big bump on the inside of it that I can just imagine hurts the inside of your pump. I just, ugh. The brake pull is really nice, but, oh God, there's, it's just the most unfortunate looking brake lever of all time. Paired with that is a 105 long cage derailleur and a 105 front derailleur. The cassette and chain are both supplied by Sunrace, with the cassette being 11 through to 36, which is kind of like a mountain bike size. The crank set is an FSA Gossamer using a 110 BCD in a four bolt pattern. Which is really annoying because now that's just another BCD standard that you need to buy chain rings for or research or something. Why wouldn't you just go five bolt? I don't understand. Why did you do that? Stop changing so many standards. If you're gonna go 110 BCD, just use the five bolt. Just, oh, so frustrating, this bike industry stuff. The chainring sizes are subcompact, so they are 4632. The brakes are Shimano R505 hydraulic flat mount disc brakes. Not that I've actually ridden the bike, but standing here and like pulling the lever, it actually feels pretty good. The wheels are hand-built Specialized Adventure Gear branded Hayfields. I don't know what the Hayfield means, but it is nice to know that on a bike like this that you're getting a nice hand-built wheel. When it comes to wheel building, Hand-built is always going to be superior over machine-built because there's going to be that extra care and effort to ensure that all spokes are evenly tensioned and that the wheel is going to last for a long time to come. I actually think that's a pretty cool feature of this model and the high ascent model. I like the fact that these are hand-built wheels and not machine-built. Not to mention the rims on this bike are some of the widest that I've ever seen and that just means that when you put massive tire on there, that, that it's gonna give it that great profile, inspire confidence, and eliminate any of that squirminess that you get with big tires. Speaking of tires, equipped on this bike are specialized Adventure Gear tubeless ready sawtooth tread tires. They're in a size 42 mil wide, and I think you can agree, they just look sweet. Apparently that sawtooth profile actually does roll quite nicely on asphalt, and will dig in surprisingly well into many different other terrains, giving you traction in places where you just didn't think that you would get it. Based on those reviews, I personally want to try a pair really bad. Expect a full review of them when I have them on my own bike. Finishing off the bike is a specialized stem and bar, and the bars are the weirdest shape ever. They have a rise that come off of them on either side of the stem, and they flare out. If I owned this bike, I would be changing them out. The saddle and seat posts are both supplied, also by Specialized. 
There's really only a few things about this bike that I don't really like. The marketing team at Specialized says this bike has a low bottom bracket, but at 65 millimeter bottom bracket drop, that isn't low. Touring bikes usually have about 80 millimeters of bottom bracket drop. Crit race bikes have about 65. 65 is considered high. The next thing I'm not crazy about is that the cables are all held down with a bolt and cinch system. Basically what that means is you always have to have a three mil with you to be able to do any sort of work on it. I prefer the zip tie method. I know it seems like I'm nitpicking here, but there's been times where you're like putting it in, like this, like, uh, it can just be really annoying. And if you haven't worked on one, uh, Beyond that, this bike is just cool. I like the fact that this is a bike that you can do a really long touring ride with, and then when you get where you wanna be, you can pull everything off of it and go do like a spirited road ride. I really love the aesthetics of this bike. I love the thin steel tubing with that massive carbon fork on there. I also like a road bike with massive, massive tires on it. Long story short, this is probably my favorite do everything adventure bike in the line. 